So you're taking A-level biology and you want to know what you have signed yourself up for. Well, let me share it all with you, the highs, the lows and the challenges. Hi everyone, my name is Miss Estrick and welcome to Miss Estrick Biology. If you are new here, then I'm here to help you to improve on those most challenging topics in biology, improve your study skills techniques and to help you to get the grades that you deserve. And today we're going through A-level biology, what to expect. So let's start with the highs, the best things about A-level biology. And of course, it is the content. If you've signed up to take A-level biology, I really hope that is because you actually like biology. And if that is the case, then you will love the information that you learn in the A-level. At GCSE, a lot of the topics you kind of skim over, you miss out information to try and make it more manageable, but in actual fact, it often makes it more confusing and not as interesting. So at A-level, lots of topics like photosynthesis, respiration, homeostasis, and so many more, you actually learn in more detail, so it makes more sense and it is so much more interesting. Some of my personal favorite topics are immunity, learning all the details about the immune system, I also actually love photosynthesis and respiration because I love biochemistry and probably my absolute favourite is inheritance. If you like problem solving then the inheritance topic is so good. And at that point I've been interrupted by little BB. I wonder what her favourite bit of biology is. So let's think about some of the challenges then. Now, although all the content being in more detail is amazing because it's more interesting, that also links to the first challenge, which is the vast amount of information that you do have to understand and remember. And an A-level course approximately should take 100 hours to teach. So that means there is going to be a lot of information. So to keep on top of it all, you're going to have to be organised from the start. Any class tests that you have, do take it seriously, revise properly, and that will help you keep on top of being able to remember all the information. Come up with strategies now as well to make sure you are reviewing and consolidating topics that you're currently learning, but also maybe try and find time once a week to look over some of the older topics, and that will really help you in the long run remember everything. Now that strategy is called space repetition, or sometimes it's called space retrieval, space revision, but I have a whole video on that, which I'll link up here. So if you do want to get a better idea of how you can plan your time like that, have a watch of that after this video. Okay, so challenge number two, can we please talk about the mark scheme? At GCSE, you are probably familiar with this already. The mark scheme is so specific. You have to phrase things in a particular way. You have to include certain keywords. And unfortunately at A-level, it's even more specific than it was at GCSE. So that is a big challenge people have. And for that reason, sometimes you do find that the first few tests you do in A-level, you do get much lower grades than you expected. But that is completely normal. It happens to most people because you've got to learn the new skills, you've got to learn the new key terms that you have to have in your answer. Now, luckily for you, you have found my channel already and I've been teaching A-level for over 10 years and I can reel off the keywords, the key terms that come up on the mark scheme for any topic. I could do it in my sleep, I know it so well because I've taught it so many times. And because I know that, I've put that together as a resource for you. So if you do think that's something you might struggle with, then definitely check out my A-level notes. I have them for OCR, I have them for AQA as well at the moment. And for those notes, on every page, I highlight the key terms and have a key terms box, which tells you these are the key marking points you need to include in your answer. I also suggest to then use those key terms I highlight and turn them into flashcards and that's a great way to test yourself and keep going over those key terms. Now, in addition to trying out my notes, having flashcards of the key terms, the final thing will be for you to try past paper questions. And I have packs of these for free on my website, which I'll link in the description below. Try lots of questions for each topic, and in doing that, you will also start to see the patterns of what key terms, key words, always come up in the mark scheme. Challenge number three is application questions. And you'll be familiar with these from GCSE. They're the types of questions where there might be a graph, and it says, suggest or explain the pattern. Or it could be linked to a table or a block of information. Essentially, you have to apply what you know 
to an unfamiliar situation. And those questions are harder to get marks on than just giving definitions or recording information. And to give you a heads up, at A-level, almost half of your A-level will be application questions. Now that does vary paper to paper. For AQA, for example, paper two in A-level is 56% application questions. So what should you do about this? Well, change how you revise. Don't just do flashcards, mind maps, to make sure you remember everything. You also need to be doing application questions. And to help you with this, I do have for free on my website, an assessment skills bundle, which has a whole booklet of just application questions, as well as a range of other skills also. So work your way through those. I also have a whole video on how to answer application questions, which I'll be linking up here for you to watch. In that video, I go through four key strategies to follow of how to answer application questions to make sure you get full marks. So watch that video, have a go at the questions, and you will see that your marks for the application questions will start to improve. But it does take time and practice, so don't expect instant changes. It does take time. So there we go. That is a bit of an insight into what to expect for A-level biology, the truth about the subject. Yes, it is hard, but all A-levels are. The A stands for advanced. It's got to be hard, but it is also an amazing A-level. There are so many fascinating topics. You develop so many skills. The practicals that you do are really, really interesting, and they will help you for any university course you go into linked to science. You develop math skills, essay skills if you're doing AQA, so many skills that will set you up for university. Now if you do want to get a head start on your A-levels, whether you're in year 12 or if you're here watching in year 13, I suggest taking a look at my entire topic videos. So have a look at my topic one summary and that will give you a heads up on everything you're going to learn in the first half term of AQA A-level biology. If you're in year 13, find out which topic you're learning first and find that one in the list as well. But that is it for today. I hope you found it helpful. Make sure you subscribe and click the notification bell so you don't miss out on any of my latest videos.